It came from behind the sun, not in brightness, but in silence. Our two swan wasn't spotted by any telescope on Earth. It didn't blaze across our sky like some celestial warning. Instead, it emerged in a quiet frame of hydrogen, a ghost hidden behind the solar glare until it drifted just far enough and then it was there. A flare discovered on September 11, 2025 by amateur astronomer Vladimir Bazugli. This object didn't enter with fanfare. It was noticed in data from the SWAN instrument aboard SOHO, a camera that doesn't see visible light but ultraviolet emissions from hydrogen atoms. And that's the first strange thing about it. Most comets are spotted by surveys hunting for asteroids, but R2 SWAN was found in a different way because it glows in a different way. And since then, things have only gotten stranger. This is the story of a comet unlike any we expected, one that's not interstellar, but feels like it could be. What exactly is R2 SWAN? Why did it take so long to see it? And is it just another comet or something else entirely? For weeks, it was hiding, not behind dust or distance, but behind sunlight. R2 Swan didn't come from deep space like 3i Atlas. It wasn't falling into our solar system from the black between stars. It was already here, just hidden by geometry. From Earth, anything too close to the sun's glare becomes invisible. This is the Holacek effect, a blind spot baked into our sky. It's not that the object doesn't exist, we just can't see it. That's exactly where R2 Swan was. When it was finally spotted, on September 11th, 2025, the discovery didn't come from a telescope on Earth. It came from a hydrogen mapping camera aboard the SOHO spacecraft, a satellite orbiting between Earth and the Sun. The camera's name is SWAN. It doesn't see stars. It sees hydrogen streaming from the solar wind and from comets. Because when icy bodies heat up, they release hydrogen clouds big enough to be seen, even when they're still invisible to us. That's why so many strange comets are named SWAN, not because they're the same, but because they're found the same way. R2 SWAN was discovered not through light, but through chemistry. Its discoverer, Vladimir Bazugli, wasn't scanning the night sky. He was looking through old SWAN data. There, he noticed something moving, something bright, something that didn't belong. At first, it had no name, just a faint blur in a sea of hydrogen. But within days, ground-based observers confirmed it. The Minor Planet Center released the designation C-2025R2, a long-period comet, a frozen relic from the outer system. But this one was heading closer. Its orbit showed a perihelion, its closest point to the Sun, of just 0.5 astronomical units. That's halfway between Earth and the Sun. And it passed that point on September 12th, one day after discovery. From there, it kept going toward Earth. On October 20th, it reaches closest approach, 0.26 astronomical units, or about 39 million kilometers. Closer than Mars, not a threat, but close enough to matter. Its minimum orbital intersection distance, the closest it can come to our path, is 0.048 astronomical units, about 7 million kilometers of clearance. So this isn't about danger. It's about timing. Because we didn't see R2 Swan until after it passed the Sun, after it released its first gases, after it erupted, possibly, in an early outburst, we're watching a transformation mid-flight. But we missed the beginning. Its orbital period isn't exact. Early estimates suggest about 22,000 years. If that's true, the last time R2 Swan passed through this part of the sky, humans were painting caves. And it won't be back anytime soon. This is it our only chance to see it, and so far, much remains unknown. Its core hasn't been resolved, its true size uncertain, maybe just a few kilometers across, but its coma, the cloud of gas and dust around it, spans over two degrees in the sky. That's four times wider than the full moon. In dark skies, binoculars reveal it, maybe even the naked eye, but comets are liars. They flare, they dim, they vanish, some fragment near the sun. Others simply fall apart. Will R2 Swan survive its approach? Will it brighten or disappear? No one knows. And that's part of its beauty. A message from the cold. A shard of time. Alone 
for thousands of years, only now breaking the silence. And for our two swan, that silence is already closing in. There's something strange about the color green. In space, it's rare, unnatural. It doesn't come from stars or planets or moons. It comes from things that burn, but don't catch fire, from molecules that glow, not because they're hot, but because they're being torn apart by sunlight. That's what's happening inside R2 Swan. Observers across the Southern Hemisphere have reported a green halo surrounding the comet, a glow so vivid, it almost seems artificial. It comes from diatomic carbon and cyanogen, two molecules broken free from the surface, now fluorescing under solar radiation. It's beautiful and a warning because when we see green in a comet, we're seeing something alive, not biologically alive, but chemically active, a surface under stress, ice transforming to gas, dust being carried away in thin, invisible streams. Our two swan is shedding. That alone isn't surprising. All comets do this. They're unstable, made of ice and dust and stone, glued together in the coldest parts of the solar system. But what makes this one unusual is how quickly it changed. In late September, something happened. The brightness jumped. Astronomers call it an outburst, a sudden flare in magnitude that can last for hours, sometimes days. It's often caused by a collapse, a pocket of pressure bursting, a crack in the surface, the sudden exposure of ice trapped for millennia, now vaporizing all at once. R2, swans surged to magnitude 5.9, maybe even 5.6 at its peak, and that's just what we saw from Earth. The coma, its cloud of gas, expanded to more than two degrees across. That's a massive envelope of activity, especially for a comet whose nucleus remains unresolved. We still haven't seen its core. All we know is what surrounds it, and even that is shifting. Photographers using lenses between 85 and 200 millimeters have captured faint structure in the tail, a stream of dust pulled outward by the solar wind, curling slightly as if resisting. Some early reports suggested it was angled strangely, possibly even toward the sun at times. That would be rare. Normally, comet tails stream away from the sun, pushed by radiation pressure. But in R2 Swan's case, we may be looking at heavier particles, larger grains of dust not easily pushed, drifting on inertia rather than light, or perhaps something more complex. Comets aren't static. Their jets rotate, their surfaces shift, sometimes, what looks like a strange orientation is just the result of tumbling, a comet turning slowly as it sheds mass from different regions. But if the tail truly is resisting the sun's push, that raises questions about density, about structure, about what lies beneath the glow. And then there's the shape of the coma itself. Some images suggest asymmetry, not a perfect sphere of gas, but something distorted, lopsided as if one side is being vented more forcefully than the other. That could hint at a large active region or instability. All of this builds toward one truth. R2 Swan is unpredictable. It could brighten again, another outburst stronger than the last, or it could fade, fragment, dissolve before our eyes. Some comets disintegrate without warning. Others simply exhaust their volatile materials and drift into darkness, leaving behind only dust and silence and we're watching this one in real time. Every night, the data changes. Every photo reveals something new, but what we don't know still outweighs what we do. We don't know how large the nucleus really is. We don't know how long it will remain active. We don't know if it will survive its closest approach to Earth. And we definitely don't know what it's trying to tell us. Because comets are more than just ice and rock. They're time travelers. They carry material older than Earth, dust formed before the sun trapped in frozen vaults for tens of thousands of years, now opening. And when they flare, it's not just light, it's memory, a flash from the deep, a story written in molecules. Our two swan may be just one more comet, or it might be the one we never forget. First came Umamua, a slender tumbling object with no tail, no gas and no clear explanation. It entered fast, accelerated mysteriously, and vanished even faster. It left behind no answers, only questions. 
Then came Borisov, a true interstellar comet, faster, brighter, and undeniably alien. Its chemical makeup challenged what we thought we knew about comets, hinting at origins far beyond our neighborhood. And then, 3I Atlas, the third known interstellar visitor, larger than expected, unusually bright, and on a trajectory that raised more than a few eyebrows. It passed near Mars, Venus, and Jupiter in a sequence so improbable, some wondered if it was really just coincidence. Now, our two swan enters the stage, not from another star, not unbound from the sun, but something about it still feels off, not in its orbit, but in its presence. Once again, we didn't see it coming. Hidden by the sun's glare, our two swan slipped into our system, unnoticed, until it was already passing perihelion. We didn't catch its entry. We only noticed it when it was already active, already shedding, already changing. And it's not the first time this has happened. Umuamua emerged without warning. Borisov was spotted after it had already crossed into our system. 3. I Atlas revealed itself late, when it was already deep within the inner solar system. Now, R2 Swan joins that list, not as an interstellar outlier, but as another quiet arrival we nearly missed. It's easy to write this off as chance, as gaps in our detection systems. After all, the Holacek Gap, the region near the sun where our telescopes can't see, is a known limitation. Objects can hide there for weeks, maybe months. But what if it's not just chance? What if it's a pattern, not of identical objects, but of interruptions? Each of these visitors, interstellar or not, comes from the blind spot. Each forces us to reevaluate how much we actually see. Each leaves us wondering what else might be moving out there, just beyond reach. There are theories, of course. Some suggest galactic tides, massive, slow gravitational waves that periodically send comets spiraling inward. Others believe the solar system might be drifting through a denser part of the galaxy, rich with debris and forgotten fragments. But the truth is, we don't know. All we know is that the pace is accelerating. The silence between discoveries is shrinking. The sky is revealing more, or perhaps we're finally learning how to see. R2, Swan might not be like Oumuamua or Borisov. It may not travel between stars, but it shares something deeper with them. That unsettling sense of timing, the way it appeared suddenly, in a moment when we were least expecting it, the way it reminds us how fragile our knowledge still is. Maybe these events are isolated, maybe they're not. But when you begin to notice repetition in the dark, it's hard to look away. R2 Swan is part of this story now, a fragment of something larger. Not just another comet, but another signal in the noise. Another object that moved from the unknown into view, only to begin slipping away again. The questions it raises may never be answered, but maybe that's not the point. Maybe the value isn't in solving every mystery, but in noticing the ones that return, the ones that break the stillness, the ones that remind us we're not alone in the sky, not alone in wondering, not alone in watching. Our two swan is still here, for now, drifting across Libra, dimming slowly, its green halo blending into the dusk. If you know where to look, you might still catch it, low in the western sky, just after sunset, a faint glow, a ripple of light against the coming night, but it won't last. These things never do. Maybe that's why we chase them, not for answers, but for the feeling they leave behind. That brief moment when something ancient and silent moves across our sky and makes us feel awake. Because comets don't knock, they don't warn, they don't wait, they arrive, they burn, they disappear. And we're left with questions about time and distance and how much we still don't see, how much might be passing overhead right now, unseen. Maybe our two swan is just ice and dust, a visitor from the past crumbling quietly into space, or maybe, like the others, it's something more. A small reminder that the universe still holds secrets. That even now, in an age of satellites and sensors, we're still vulnerable to wonder. If you found this story as haunting as we did, let it drift with you a little longer. Subscribe so you don't miss the next arrival. Like, so this one stays alive just a bit longer. And tell us, what do you think is out there? Waiting behind the light? We'll be watching until the next silence breaks.